Welcome to the show, the light of you. Welcome to the show. 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 Hey everyone, this is Divine and welcome to my channel. If this is the first time you're visiting this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications as well so that when I upload new videos, you're the first to know. Twista is best known for his rapid fire rap style, popularly known as chopping. At one point, he even held the title of the fastest English rapper in the world. He has been pretty consistent with his releases. The latest one, an EP called Lifetime came out in 2020. He has also done countless features and guest appearances for artists like Do or Die, Kanye West, Trey Songz, and Bobby V, among others. Twista was born as Carl Terrell Mitchell on November 27, 1973 in Chicago, Illinois. He grew up in the K-Town area of the West Garfield Park neighborhood, located on the west side of Chicago. At the age of 12, he developed an interest in rap by listening to college radio, finding inspiration from New York acts like Eric B and Rakim, and Cool G Rap and DJ Polo. While attending school at Collins High School on West 13th Street, he started developing his talent which he later refined on the street corners of his neighborhood. He had several jobs before getting his big break in the industry, including selling shoes, telemarketing, working at a factory, as a security guard, as a barber, and at a McDonald's. He recalls receiving a lot of support from Chicago's underground while performing at freestyle showcases and local talent shows under the rap name Cavalier, and this pushed him to improve at his craft. He was also featured on several Chicago rap mixtapes alongside other local up-and-coming talent. It was while performing at one of these talent shows held at the Gold Dome on Chicago's west side, that he was discovered by DJ Eric the Wiz of WGCI-FM. DJ Eric became his manager and used his connections to get Twista's music in front of Steve Rifkind from Loud Records, who was impressed by what he heard. He flew Twista out to LA to hear him in person and then signed him to their label. That same year, Twista married his girlfriend Rashida, and three years later, they welcomed a baby girl they named Aliyah. In June 1992, at the age of 19, he dropped his first album entitled Running Off at the Mouth. At the time, he was going by Tongue Twista. He decided to drop the name Cavalier because in his own words, the name was whack. The album debuted right after he entered the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's fastest MC pronouncing 598 syllables in just 55 seconds. At the time, he was a practicing Muslim, and throughout the album, there were subtle references to his belief in Allah and the importance of Islam in his life. More recently, when asked by The Real Hip Hop about the role of Islam in his life, he explained that while he doesn't practice it every day all day, he is Muslim by nature. It helped to shape his understanding of life, religion, and why we exist. The album was the first released by Loud Records who have subsequently worked with acts like Wu-Tang Clan, 3-6 Mafia, and Mob Deep. Mr. Tongue Twista was the only single release from the album, but it failed to chart and eventually he was dropped by the label. So he became the first major Chicago act to be picked up and then dropped by a major record label. It didn't do too well in his hometown either and actually sold more units in four other cities. The major radio stations weren't giving it much airplay, and you would think that with his manager being from WGCIFM, he would get some kind of exposure there, but that didn't mean jack. When asked why Twista's single wasn't getting much support at his station, Brian Anthony, the programming director at WGCIFM, said, We try to choose rap songs with adult appeal. That song was too fast, too hard to understand. In a statement, his manager likened him to Robert Kelly, otherwise known as R. Kelly, saying that no one paid attention to him in Chicago until he started getting a lot of support from other cities. Then they started to claim him as one of theirs. He felt that this was the same thing that was happening to Twista. Twista was far from the first rapper to use his fast style of rapping. 
popularly known as chopping that originated in the Midwest US. But Twista definitely took it to another level, doing verses at almost breakneck speed. Okay, so maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you know what I mean if you've ever listened to his music. I think a lot of people were convinced that it was sped up post-production because he just rapped so fast and people weren't really used to that. This all brought its own drama as well because during the 90s, Bone Thugs and Harmony, a very popular hip hop group who hail from Ohio, accused Twista of copying their rap style. Bone Thugs and Harmony is known for their chopping style that incorporates harmony. The accusation led to a long standing beef. It was the first nigga, you know what I'm saying, that made it be known in the game that he could rap fast, flat out. But when he did it first, you know what I'm saying, it was like niggas wasn't picking up on it. So Bone came out with it, everybody loved it. So Bone really put it on the map. Twister responded to their accusations with the single Crook County, featuring Speed Knot, Mobsters, and Psychodrama, referring to them as hoes of the harmony, among other things. Now, just to clarify, they didn't create chopping, but their success in the industry did bring more national attention to that particular style of rap. Over the years, Twista has managed to reconcile with the group. After becoming good friends with Lazy Bone, they worked together on Midwest Invasion, which they dropped in 2005. Crazy and Wishbone held out for much longer, putting out subliminal disses in their music, but when they all worked together on Spitcher Game from the Notorious B.I.G. duets, the final chapter, it's been said that they finally squashed their beat. Twista started working on his second album called Resurrection, which was set to be released in 1994, but was delayed. Fellow Chicago rapper Common had released his sophomore album under the same name just two weeks prior to Twista's projected album release. This led to marketing conflicts, so Twista's album was only released in Chicago and it didn't garner much national attention. At the time, he dropped Tongue from his name, so the album was released under the name Twista. I'm just going to say that the change was probably a good idea because at that time, I don't think the world was ready for a tongue twister at all. Around that same time, he formed a Chicago-based hip-hop group called Speed Not Mobsters, consisting of fellow Chicago acts Liffy Stokes and Maze, and they made their debut appearance on the song One Shot, One Kill from his Resurrection album. But what really stood out on that album was a song called Suicide, which was basically him firing back at Naughty by Nature after the group, specifically Treach, questioned his lyrical ability and negatively criticized his rap style. Treach referred to Twista's style as a gimmick, and he even mentioned him in one of their songs called Sleeping on Jersey, where he told him to tongue twist his ass back to Chicago. At this point, Twista was fed up with Treach as well as some of the other peers were taking digs at him and publicly trying to shame him. Suicide was his response mainly to Treach, but generally to all the other haters who either didn't appreciate his style of rap or who doubted it was even possible. In an interview with Atlanta-based radio host Bihai, Twista revealed that Treach's disc partially inspired his third album, Adrenaline Rush, which was released in June 1997. It was pretty clear that Twista did not feel that he was receiving the respect that he deserved upon releasing his album. And I've gotta admit that when I first heard Twista, I felt some disbelief because I was amazed at his skill. It seemed almost unreal to me. But these guys just went overboard with the criticisms going in on the man, and I'm not really feeling that. It's one thing to say something isn't your style, maybe it's so different that it's just not connecting with you, but I felt that there was no need to dog him like that. Honestly, it's just giving me jealous energy. By 1996, he was teaming up with Chicago producer the legendary Trackster who he worked with a lot during his career and rap trio Do or Die on their hit single Pulp Him. Around the same time, Twist is signed with Big Beat, which operates through Atlantic Records. During the same period, Twista and Rashida hit a rough patch in their marriage and separated, with Rashida officially filing for a divorce in 1999. His third album, called Adrenaline Rush, was released in June 1997 and was produced by the legendary Trackster. This was Twista's first album to actually chart, peaking at number 77 on the Billboard Hot 200. He released two singles off that album, Emotions, which was partially based off of Pope Him, the do or die hit song that he was previously featured on and then get it wet 
which charted on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 96. Even though the album didn't get a lot of radio play or even airplay outside of the Midwest, it still managed to be certified platinum back in 2019. So it was a bit of a slow burner, but it did its thing. In 1998, he released Mob Stability, which was a collaboration with his hip hop group, Speed Not Mobsters. The follow up to this album, Mob Stability 2 Nation Business, was released 10 years later. He also created his own label called Legit Balling, under which he released four albums. Legit Balling released in 1999, Legit Balling Volume 2, Street Scriptures in 2001, Respect the Game Volume 3 in 2002, and finally Volume 4 The Truth in 2006. He also worked with Rough Riders Entertainment and hip-hop artist Dragon on the Rough Riders Ride or Die Volume 2 compilation album, specifically on the track called Twisted Heat. So he stayed working on different projects throughout the early 2000s. Now things really started taking off in 2004 after Twista released his fourth studio album, Kamikaze, working with artists like Kanye West and Ludacris. Kamikaze debuted at the top of the Billboard 200 album charts after the success of its first single, Slow Jams, featuring Kanye West and Jamie Foxx. It also got to the number one spot on the US Top R&B Hip Hop Albums charts. The single became a number one hit in the US. And I think this single and this album on a whole really brought Twista to people's attention and definitely raised his profile within the rap community as well. He released four other singles from this album, most notably Overnight Celebrity. Both Slow Jams and Overnight Celebrity were produced by Kanye West and can be considered two of his most successful singles. The album did really well, selling about 2 million copies overall, 312,000 in its first week alone. It is his most successful album to date and it is certified platinum. Not only that, but a single he worked on called Hope featuring Faith Evans was included on the soundtrack for Coach Carter, a popular movie that was released back in 2005. So overall, 2004 was a really good year for his career as things started taking off for him. Now, just as Twista started receiving greater recognition in the music industry, his personal life was taking a turn for the worse. Rashida spoke to the Sun-Times about her soon-to-be ex-husband, calling him a deadbeat father and referring to his success as a rapper. They were still engaged in a court battle and Rashida claimed that he became very clever at hiding his assets and as a result the case could not be resolved. According to Rashida, he showed up to court with fake check stubs claiming that he only made $2,000 a month. As a result, the court ordered him to pay her $100 per week in child support. The court later increased that amount to $460 per month. At the time, she claimed that he was at least two months behind in his child support payments. And she claimed that when her daughter started school that year, she was unable to purchase any new clothing for her as a result of the delayed payments. Rashida's lawyer at the time, Janice Bobak, stated that the case was stalled because their legal team was unable to access information about his income and business affairs. His lawyer, Jeffrey Leaving, stated that Twista had sent out the payment and that he is indeed a loving father and not a deadbeat like his now ex-wife was claiming. He stated that he visited his daughter regularly at his mother's house, but Mary Mitchell from the Sun-Times claims that when she spoke to his then 10-year-old daughter, she said that she had not seen her father since her ninth birthday the previous year when he took her to the zoo. Her name, age, school district, and photographs were all included in the article, which I think was very irresponsible on the parts of the adults involved. Twister had enough of this and his lawyer filed an emergency petition for a restraining order against Rashida. She was ordered to refrain from talking to the press about her divorce and not to allow her daughter to speak to the press about her father. Rashida was also ordered by the judge not to speak negatively to her daughter about Twista. When the court order was granted, it was also established that Twista was current with his child support payments. His lawyer stated, It is a sad state of affairs when a judge has to order a mother not to speak to her child about the father in a negative manner. And I will say this, no matter what is going on between you and the other parent, the child is innocent in everything and shouldn't have to listen to all that drama. Yes, there might be pain in the mix, but keep that between yourselves and try and find the best outcome for the child. 
these kids deserve to be protected, not exploited for financial gain. And it goes without saying that fathers should make every effort to play an active role in their kids' lives and play their part in providing for their needs no questions asked now riding the wave of his successful fourth album he quickly followed that up with his fifth studio album the day after which he released in october 2005 which is certified gold and debuted at number two on the u.s billboard 200 going to number one on the u.s top r&b hip-hop albums chart selling over 130,000 copies in its first week Adrenaline Rush 2007 followed in September 2007, and it was released 10 years after his third studio album of the same name. While the album received generally good reviews, it admittedly did not perform as well as Tista's two previous albums right off the bat. In 2008, he launched a new record label called Get Money Gang Entertainment, under which he released his next album, Category F5, featuring the hit single, Wetter. He followed that up with his eighth solo studio album the perfect storm in november 2010 featuring artists like chris Brown and diddy among others the following year a documentary called mr immortality the life and times of twista directed by vlad yudin was released and since that release he has been pretty consistent with his releases dropping albums almost every year going forward including eps and collaboration for his subsequent work critics commented that while he definitely has a great delivery and production quality his most recent albums lacked direction and instead of reflecting growth as an artist he just rehashed the same old tired themes about women guns drugs and money with rhymes that were not particularly creative. Tragedy struck for Twista in 2014 after his longtime bodyguard Davey Easterling was killed. According to reports, the body of his bodyguard was found in a burned out building. The killer, Matthew Jackson, shot his victim, slit his throat, and set his body on fire. Easterling had allegedly gone drinking on the night of February 20th with two women, one of which was Jackson's girlfriend. The two women got into a fight and Jackson's girlfriend ran home and told him all about it, mentioning that Easterling was in possession of some foreign currency. They then went and confronted the victim at the building where his body was found. He was robbed and killed and then Jackson left with the two women. His body was found early on February 21st by a response team called to the scene of the fire and Twista posted to his Twitter account that he had lost too many good friends to these streets and asked for anyone with information to come forward. Jackson ended up only living a few blocks away from Easterlin. He was found and charged with first degree murder and armed robbery. The police did not make the public aware of what information led to his arrest and honestly I didn't expect them to because that would not have been a smart move. Two years later Twista found himself in hot water after he was arrested on a misdemeanor charge for possession of marijuana. The arrest was made during a police stop for tailgating while the rapper was on his way to a concert that was supposed to be held at Big Shots, a South Haven music venue in Indiana. He was arrested alongside the driver of the vehicle and two other passengers who the police also charged. They were transported at the time to Porter County Jail and then released on a $500 cash bond. Uh, the, the proud owner is one of those four. Nobody rolled on anybody, right? Yeah, nobody rolled on anybody. Uh, nobody took took uh blame it was just a messed up situation with a little bit of smoke allegedly and uh we suffered the consequences and the fans did too it couldn't have been that serious if they only paid 500 dollars. police said they found about half an ounce of marijuana hidden in a fake can in the car and that all four denied that the marijuana was theirs. It really was not that serious. The tailgating stop was because the Rolls Royce Phantom they were traveling in was seen following a truck too closely. It was when they were pulled over that the cops smelled the marijuana which led to their arrest. The concert was subsequently canceled. Now besides music, he did some television appearances like in 2017, he went on ABC's To Tell the Truth, which is an American TV show where four celebrity palinists are presented with three contestants and must identify who the central character is based on the occupation or experience that has been announced by the show's current host who is blackish star anthony anderson what i want to know is whose great idea it was to feature twista on this show i remember watching that episode like who do these people really think they are and did they really think that donald Faison and jalen rose didn't know right away who twista is like why was this even a thing sitting there trying to act all 
nonchalant asking questions to all the contestants like they don't already know who it is. The game could have been over within the first few seconds. He followed that up with a stint as a judge in 2019 on Rhythm and Flow, a rap competition featured on Netflix. Just last year, he had a social media run-in with Oscar-nominated actress Gabori Sadib after he posted a pretty offensive meme, which was a side-by-side -side photo of her and model Bernice Burgos, prompting viewers to choose one of the two ladies. She commented, wow, I am um, G. At Twista GMG, I only like you as a rapper I forgot about in 2005, but good luck with option B. Now I've got to say, I was here for the clapback because the post was distasteful as hell and very unnecessary, trying to act like he didn't know what the hell he was doing. After receiving backlash online, Twista quickly deleted the post as was expected telling the shade room that it was an honest mistake, that he was traveling most of the day when he saw the mistake and immediately had it taken down. He followed that up with, I don't know her directly, but my sincere apologies to her. Now, I was not born yesterday, but what kind of mistake was that? Did he trip while typing that caption or something? Cause there is no way that was accidental. Trying to talk about it was an honest mistake. In August, 2020, Twista launched his latest business venture called The Gun Camp. The aim of this camp is to teach firearm safety to people living in his hometown. His camp offers student sessions with not only him, but also law enforcement specialist Jojo Stegen and Creative Scott. Yes, sir. This is Gucci Glock all the way, baby. Want to do a quick gun review? Shit, I'm down for it. Check it out. I'll let you know that even though it is nothing you haven't seen, it's dope and press a come with a couple of magazines. Two back straps to help you get a grip and you can really make it run. Look right here, got a ledge for the thumb. Mm. One thing I know will make me go and get this, the optics sit low, so the sight's co-witness. Serrated top back in front of the slides, ejection port in the middle, plus it got a couple of windows and the mag well is plastic and slightly flared. Just enough for you to easily get the mag in there. Some might say it's similar to others, so it's glockish, but I don't knock it to me. They got the design in the pocket, I love it. MSRP is good if you want to budget the barrel. You could get bronze or gold if you want it. It's a multiple roll. Nine millimeter, go get your money in get a shadow systems ml 920 for the price of 499 dollars participants will get the chance to work with the three men who are certified instructors receive concealed carry certification lunch fingerprints a photograph and autograph from the rapper as well as a photo with the other instructors and the chance to hear some of twista's latest music but what do you guys think let me know down in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share this video. Also, turn on your notifications so that whenever I post a new video, you're the first to know. Until next time.